today at FiscCon TV, we will talk about medicinal plants. And the medicinal crop industry is relatively new, but very exciting and is changing the way we look at horticulture and value creation from plants. So that's why we're zooming in today on medicinal crops. And we'll do that by looking at it the VisCon way, to the entire chain, from seeds, genetics, all the way towards the end product. Young plants, genetics, starting materials, why is that so important? As a grower, you want to have um, reliability, you want to predict uh, your outcome, you want to plan everything. Uniformity is the key to all those questions. At Fiscon, we love to think outside the box, but let's go inside the box. Can you show us what's inside, see? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so these are rooted, bo uh, rooted plants, and this is a... Um, so you're peeling off the top seal? Yeah, yeah. So this is a, um, a VV patent product where you have a barista ball, you can see it through here. Um, all the foil has a micro perforative uh, holes on them and the plants can be nicely rooted. Hardened, semi-hardened, depends on the uh, cultivar and your settings as well. And you can ship this basically to your clients. Um, so this is, uh, in tissue culture, there's a very big component, it's called artificial media and it's sterile. And um, this is basically containing a few different elements, a macro and a micros. You have vitamins, you have a gelling agent, you have sugar, you have hormones. Move away from seeds towards tissue culture. How do I store my genetic sources? Do you have any method for that? Yeah, so of course, uh, tissue culture itself, as you can see, this is um, sterile, so you can, you, can, you can keep here in a lower temperature for a longer period of time. But um, actually, there is another way, is to freeze them in an extreme low temperature, close to minus 200 Celsius, and that is, uh, we call it the cryopreservation. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you basically need a small cryo tank, and you can... Um, uh, store your genetics for a um, for infinity almost yeah so what do you see as the key trends in medicinal crops today i would say four key trends which i've spotted in the last couple of years so one of them is of course uh, the legal uh, legislation of uh, medicinal cannabis in many countries so in the last couple of years, in over more than 40 countries, uh, medicinal cannabis has been wow. legalized in a certain way. 40 countries. More than 40 countries, yes. I met a lot of growers which have quite some challenges with uh, getting access to stable genetics. Yeah. So Sue was already explaining a little bit about, uh, you know, how you can start your cultivation material uh, with. Uh, but yeah, many growers are, you know, when they go from maybe 10,000 seeds, they want to go to 1 million or 2 million. Um, you know, the industry is not that old and getting access to stable genetics is a challenge. If I take one of these plants, which I just got from, from Sue, nice roots on it, ready to grow, and I put them into a production greenhouse, or do I put them in what they call a vertical farm these days? What do you want to achieve when you grow a plant? You want to achieve the best yield, the, the most stable and uh, predictable output of your plant, yeah. especially when we talk about GMP. It's very important that you have the same amount of THC, CBD, whatever you're growing. Glasshouse is a very good uh, way of growing uh, product, yes. We've done it for many years now. But you have to take into account that there's a lot of influence from the outside. There's a lot of light sometimes, the sun is there, there's cloudy days. Especially this spring in the Netherlands. Yeah. Amazing. It's like uh, snow, sun, winter and summer in, uh, in one day. Mm. And it has a lot of effect on your plants, um, which creates a little bit less stability. So nowadays we are further with the development of, uh, of growing. So the lights are better, the climate control is better. And now we can grow a really good plant uh, without the uh, outside influences in a closed environment. Yeah, as well, um, what, what we already noticed is that more and more of the elements of growing are being automated. Of course, it started back in the days with automatic irrigation, climate control, such things. Uh, you see with the uh, VV system, that's also part of the uh, growing is done uh, within closed confinement. Uh, more and more automation is also applied there. So slowly the, uh, the human input is taken out and being taken over by uh, computers. And the extra benefit nowadays is that we have a lot of data that comes back to, uh, to all these different uh, platforms and uh, companies. And the learning curve is getting uh, steeper and steeper. So the more we, we do with everybody, the more data we create, the better we can grow. And uh, it, the easier it gets to take out the, the people, unfortunately for uh, a lot of people maybe, but for the growers itself, that's a good thing. And indeed, a very fascinating company, Phyto Vitality. Tell us something about it. What is the mission of your enterprise? 
Vital Vitality is part of Euro Vitality, so it's actually our cultivation division. Um, we also have a trading division and uh, life science, which is more focused on IP and breeding or genetics. Uh, so Vital Vitality is our cultivation site here in, in, in Switzerland. Uh, we have a 1.5 hectare uh, glass house, it's uh, fully automated and I can say we are leading in CBD production here in, in Switzerland. Um, where do we go as a, as a market? Is it either going in a different industries as well? Is it a recreational industry ex for extraction purposes, for food industry, for smokables? So there will always be different genetics and some of them will be chosen for, for, for their smell, for their, for their terpenes and other ones perhaps for the contents of CBD or THC or one of the other cannabinoids. So there will be a lot of genetics on the market. Uh, I think it's just being able to develop a genetic and connect it to an end product. That will be the key also for us to, to start and to develop. So when, when do you start the process that you're responsible of? So the product is harvested, that's where you come in with your team? Uh, it starts with uh, the branch. Right. So the branch is being uh, taken off the, off the pots, goes into the tray, the tray goes into a, st a stage of storage. Um, before it goes there, we first weigh the product. Uh, the crate that we use, we, use, uh, we provide. With that crate, we uh, add an, uh, a barcode to it. So every stage of the, of the process, we can detect it. Uh, we can bring it towards every station, we can follow it, we can weigh it, we can produce it. And from that point, we know everything that were, uh, uh, happened with that tray. And I want to go on to our next guest, Patrick Sannes, about another part of the Viscon group that many people may not know about, which is our software department, Patrick. Correct. So yeah. you're leading our software development team. Yeah. So what do you guys actually do? We build software and we dedicate ourselves in the process or basically in the part between the machine line and the ERP system. Right. So what we do is we facilitate the business process of the customer with their machine line, get data out of there, execute orders, uh, process the product, track and trace and all that sort of stuff. Exactly. So what is exactly the benefit for the, the end user, for the customer? when it comes to your software uh, system? Uh, one of the biggest benefits is that you have a streamlined process because uh, you need to produce products, you need to track and trace that product. So our system ensures that you streamline that process instead of working with pen and paper next to the line to see what is going on. Are people still doing that, Patrick? Uh, there are industries where they're doing that, yeah. But you see more and more the bigger facilities and especially these kind of industry where the track and trace um, requirements are pretty strong. Uh, you see need for automation to make sure that whatever happens is registered and you can follow that up at a later point in time. Excellent. So is there any artificial intelligence involved, Patrick? So therefore we implemented a camera setup that did analysis of the tray with deep learning algorithms to detect if it's a product or if it's waste. And if there was any disc discrepancy between what the operator said and the camera said, we stopped the line and we let someone else evaluate that uh, uh, choice, basically. What is your take on blockchain, Patrick? Uh, it, it could be interesting. Um, what you see is that they implemented uh, blockchains to track and to validate if what you bought is really what it says it is. Right. And you see trends that it's upcoming and we're investigating that, looking at it at that. And because we build all our software in-house, we integrate the machine data, we can actually adapt our software towards such a blockchain. So these days we can actually select and extract the molecules that we want, that we want to have in our end product. So uh, reading about this, we talk about extraction and, and refinery. What is the difference? What is extraction or extraction technology? You can compare the best with coffee. Mm. So if you have uh, uh, coffee, coffee powder from the, the coffee plant, uh, we put hot water on it and all kinds of uh, compounds that are in the botanic, the coffee botanic, are uh, then moved or transferred from the coffee herb towards the water. And then the coffee as a drink is created. So this process where you use a liquid, sometimes a gas, but in the case of coffee, of course, it's hot water, to take out all kinds of compounds out of the botanics is called extraction. 
or extraction technology. The holy grail of extraction technology is to take out all these interesting phytochemicals into one step, mim mimicking the spectrum or the gametogam of the original botanical plant. The purpose of extraction nowadays, or at least modern extraction, to see whether we can take out the full spectrum of these healthy compounds out of that. Because there are indications that the health benefit of such an extract correlates with all the compounds. So not a single molecule with all the compounds. It's called synergetic effect. Sometimes it is called the entourage effect. But uh, that is more or less the holy grail nowadays of, uh, of extraction. One thing that struck me was active candy. Yeah. What is that? Active candy is an, uh, a candy product, also what you see here, like a crimson jelly, like we uh, also specialized in. Uh, which contains an active ingredient. And what is an active ingredient? That can be a supplement, uh, like the vitamins you take in the morning. So everything that has like an, an active uh, uh, work on your body that you can implement in a candy product. So uh, what is important in your confectionery product is uh, diversification. So uh, something special, something new. Yeah. And what is important in your candy product with the active ingredient is it, in it, is that the dosage of your active ingredient is in every product consistent, but also that your process is uh, a clean process, so that you don't have the chance that you have cost contamination over multiple products. That's something that you don't want. So we've talked about the beginning of the chain. Genetics, plant propagation, multiplication, cultivation, post-harvest processing, extraction, software, and of course, turning that product into something like a candy.